Hello everyone, I'm Adam Ebert and welcome to Can I Teach It, a show that explores the teachability of pop culture across mediums. Today's episode is on Dungeons and Dragons. Let's roll for initiative. This book is filled with beautiful prose. This film start acts a bit on the nose. This album features just one hit. But can I teach it? With me, Mr. Ebert. Okay, so for some context, as a game, Dungeons and Dragons has come a long way. The game has pushed its way into the mainstream with the help of television shows that feature characters playing D&D like Stranger Things and Community, but also some uh, real world shows like Critical Role and Adventure Zone in which uh, celebrities and voice actors play their D&D campaigns uh, for all of us to see. As a result of those shows and a number of other factors, D&D has now become more prominent and accessible than it's ever been. But where did the game come from? The concept of Dungeons and Dragons comes from the humble beginnings as the product of two primary forefathers, Gary Gygax and Dave Arneson. The two created the game out of a love for both the fantasy genre and the hobby of miniature war games. The two were inspired by war game books or game books like H.G. Wells' Little Wars and Fletcher Pratt's Naval War Game, and they wanted to create something of their own that was similar. Gygax also incorporated the use of dye, which he discovered in a uh, school supply catalog, seeing a bunch of different sided dye. From there, the two developed the initial concept of the game that eventually becomes Dungeons and Dragons. The game flourishes with the incorporation of new concepts, new collaborators, each who added their own complexities to the core concept of the game, and each bringing, at times, a new edition of the game. Today, it is one of the most popular games in the world and a cornerstone of nerd culture. But what is the basic concept of the game? At the start, players create characters, construct character sheets with stats, consider motivations and backstories, detailed histories, abilities that their characters may have within the natural structure of the game. The Dungeon Master, or DM, helps construct the world and experience for those players as they lead their characters through a campaign a story in which they are making decisions based on what the DM presents them. Locales, characters, and conflicts are all described to the players as they are provided opportunities to make choices as their characters. They may need to barter with a local shopkeeper for secrets or a special item, or they might battle a dragon or some pack of goblins. All of a character's decisions are informed and determined based on what's on their character sheet. If your character's charisma statistic is low, your chance of charming that shopkeeper out of some information is also low. If your character has high strength and an awesome weapon, that pack of goblins is going to be taken care of, no problem. Based on what the dungeon master has laid out, the player then makes their choices and describes their actions to the DM. To determine the success of their actions, the players start by rolling a 20-sided dice and potentially other dice, depending on what they're doing. They may add a modifier to those dice based on particular abilities and statistics. A character may be good at persuasion, and they have a modifier based on how good their persuasion is that helps them and can be added to their roll. That ultimately gives them a higher chance of success. Then, based on the success or failure of their dice roll, the DM describes the consequences of the player's actions as the story continues rinse, repeat. Ultimately, the focus of any Dungeons & Dragons campaign is to experience a story together as a group led by a dungeon master as you actively make choices that can affect the narrative for better or worse. So for option number one, we're doing something called play the classics or play the text. For this, you're gonna have students work in small groups that you convene with as the DM and have them act out or play key moments in a novel that you're reading or a play that you're reading. You can design a character sheet for who the students play in that scene or you can have them create it. From there, you're going to run the scene as the DM, giving them details and allowing your students to make decisions that are true to their given character. In regards to what you're reading, this activity could be done before or after actually reading the given scene or chapter. 
For example, I have created a mini lesson that I will be sharing with all of you for The Great Gatsby, in which students in a group of four play either Jay Gatsby, Nick Carraway, Daisy Buchanan, or Tom Buchanan. In one of the climactic scenes from Fitzgerald's novel, Chapter 7, where those four characters find themselves at a suite in the Plaza Hotel. In terms of motivations that might drive a lot of the action, certainly Jay is expressing his love for Daisy, diffusing a situation, defending himself from Tom Buchanan. Daisy must decide what her future entails, who might she be spending the rest of her life with, expressing her thoughts, preventing a conflict herself. Nick Carraway potentially is trying to mediate and again, prevent that physical altercation between Tom and Jay. Tom is mocking Gatsby. He's acting from a place of anger, trying to find out what Daisy wants. He's also trying to persuade her from being with Jay. With an activity like this, students could use their knowledge of character plot, as well as the information from that character sheet to make decisions as they're considering character motivations and the larger goals for those characters. Students roll die, add modifiers, determining their success. As your group progresses, you see where the scene goes based on the informed decision-making from your students. Compare that to what actually plays out in the text and discuss it at length. Uh, maybe you can compare what one group uh, did in terms of decision-making to another group. There's also a cross-curricular opportunity, bringing in a math teacher and discussing statistics. If a character like Nick Carraway is not particularly knowledgeable or charismatic, what are the chances they can persuade characters like Tom and Gatsby in an effort to avoid a impending physical confrontation? Crunch some numbers, look at probability of die, and see what are the chances. Consider those stats on his character sheet and determine what are the chances that the interaction goes in Nick's favor. That would certainly be a great opportunity to touch upon multiple disciplines in one activity, an opportunity to collaborate with some of the other teachers in your building. Option number two is play or create your own story. In terms of playing your story, you might construct a scene for your students to play around with um, and to play around with characters they've created on your, their own. Well, certainly that would be a great exercise in characterization, decision-making, and can definitely touch on aspects of social-emotional learning. However, that option can potentially be high prep for both you and your students. On the other hand, you can have students create their own Dungeons and Dragons style scenario or campaign. They create a world or a location that players could explore and you can have students detail the options that players have in playing out what they've created. Your students would detail the possible outcomes players could experience based on the choices they make. This in particular is a great opportunity for synthesis. Students are considering the cause and effect relationships in the decision-making process and in the world building they're doing. But again, having students synthesize worlds, stories, decision-making prompts on their own based on your instruction is some of the most complex work that you can do in your classrooms. Option number three is just play D&D. &D. Actually playing D&D, &D, Dungeons and Dragons in its purest form is still an option that you as a teacher can consider. Certainly this is something where you can just use the thing as is without any kind of modification, but that presents some challenges, certainly in the complexity and the length of some of the campaigns out there. There are some great places to start. I, for one, am a huge fan of Rolled and Told, uh, which is a series published by Lion Forge. It contains some pre-made characters, maps, campaigns, uh, some story elements that are much more accessible than the average D&D campaign. Some of it as well is presented by uh, some great comics creators, uh, artists, writers, and a, and a bunch of other folks putting all that together. One of the campaigns even takes place at a school, a school of magic, but a school nonetheless, which is really cool. Um, going back to what I said about cross-curricular activities, you could bring in um, some science uh, in terms of characters maybe exploring types of, of alchemy. And I think with some quick tweaks, uh, you could take something that's normally fantasy and bring it to some real world application, talking about decision making, characterization, uh, chemistry even. Ultimately, uh, 
Rolled and Told will not disappoint um, in terms of exploring other options for D&D campaigns, and I think it's a great gateway into the game in general. Option number four is elementary school. So friend of the show, Ben Packard, is a elementary school teacher who loves D&D. In fact, we played Dungeons and Dragons together, and I thought it would be a great opportunity to pick his brain and see how he would bring the game into his classroom. I did love hearing what Ben had to say, his approach, and how a bunch of different disciplines come together. So go ahead and uh, enjoy. So something you said is, is your kids in particular in second grade really gravitate towards those opportunities to be creative. And that's something you see mm-hmm. is really enriching for them, right? Absolutely. Yeah, that's always my favorite part of the day is when the kids get a little free time, independent, creative time, and just seeing the stuff they come up with, you know, whether it's a drawing, whether it's a story. Um, I mean, you know, you want to talk about, you know, thinking outside the box. I mean, the kids are experts at that. Um, so I think that if you provide, oh, are you there? Yeah. Okay. Um, so I think if you provide students kind of like that almost sandbox style, you know, learning um, environment, uh, you would really uh, get some interesting interactions between the kids um, and and just a lot of really rich learning. Uh, yeah. Now, see, now you're frozen. <laughs> Which is fine. Whatever, it, whatever happens, okay. happens. All right. Um, and yeah, so, you, you know, you talked about decision making. What what are some of like scenarios you might have them right so they they're they're developing their characters they're designing their characters what are some maybe um decisions you might have them make in in those small groups a big part or one of the big concepts we you know um go over at the elementary level is uh character traits right whether they're inside versus outside character traits um and uh you know decision making by characters and stories uh, and, and how that, you know, makes them, you know, the hero or the villain or, um, so when kids are making their characters, uh, I just see a lot of opportunity for, for creativity. Um, and I do see, you know, you can tie in, you know, adjectives, um, working with the kids and doing their character traits, uh, when they're coming up with their characters. Um, and then, you know, for the higher grades, you can talk uh, a little bit more about, you know, like their, um, um, their alignment, right? So in Dungeons and Dragons, right, you usually pick an alignment for your character, right? So what does a lawful good character look like as opposed to a chaotic good character? And I think that has a lot of um, uh, uh, room for, for uh, you know, um, teaching and growth in the higher grades as well. Mm-hmm. And then so math, I mean, D&D, uh, math, I struggle with in D&D a lot myself, but, you know, it's, <laughs> it's basic it's subtraction and addition and using those modifiers. So, you know, you were talking about getting some uh, dice. How, how do you think math, you know, how, what are some, some specific things where you're connecting what you're already doing in second grade with, with some of the mechanics of D and D, how might that work? Yeah. I'm, I'm glad you brought up the modifiers because that's the first thing that came to my mind at the elementary level. We do a lot with fact fluency, right? Whether it's addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division in my grade, it's fact fluency, uh, addition and subtraction up to 20. So I just kind of thought to myself, well, I could do like a short guided math uh, lesson with four to five kids. And what are we working on? Oh, you know, we're adding, uh, we're adding tens, right? We're practicing on adding, you know, adding 10 to numbers. So for this scenario, I'm going to make all the kids modifiers plus 10, right? And so, um, you know, modifiers are in Dungeons and Dragons and and role playing games in general. um, You know, if you have a very quiet, um, stealthy character, they might have a higher modifier, let's say plus five, as opposed to, you know, a big hulking barbarian who, uh, you know, makes a lot of noise, they might have a minus one uh, plus or a minus one modifier. So um, I think that would be a really cool idea to have the kids roll their dice, right? And then, okay, I, I got my number here. I have, I rolled an 11 and my modifier is plus 10. So I have to do 11 plus 10. Right. So I think that'd be really cool. Uh, it just the first thing that jumped to my mind was was fact fluency, for sure. I'm, you know, over the years, I've uh, piloted and I've done a few different SEL uh, curriculums in my classroom. Um, and, you know, as you know, when you asked me to do this, I thought to myself, 
Dungeons and Dragons, like role playing. It's, it's, it's perfect because every lesson in all of the SEL curriculums that I've, I've used, they all have some sort of a role play aspect in it, right? Or they give you a, saint, a scenario, right? Or they give you a story. Um, and let's say if you're, you know, talking about empathy, if the focus is on empathy, um, then you might have a story about, you know, two kids, uh, and one of them does really well on a test. One of them does not do so well. Right. And then you go into the focus, right. Empathy and in role-playing games, I mean, you are actually having the kids live it in real time. They're making the decisions. They're living in the story, and they are making decisions that have consequences, right? So, you know, in I, if you gave me uh, an SEL curriculum with uh, some role-playing aspects in it um, and maybe a reader's theater type script where the kids have to stand up here and read a story or an open world type scenario where the kids, I just lay it out and the kids kind of act it out on them on their own with their characters. I'm going to take the latter uh, every single time. I mean, mm -hmm. I just think that's exciting for the kids. It's different. And again, they get to act out and make decisions that they normally might not find themselves in, especially at this, you know, young of an age as well. Yeah. I think, I think starting early and, and again, I think what, what drives it all home is your, and what I think you did incredibly well is you're taking pieces that are already existing and, and making them work for that D and D setting. So, you know, that's, that's perfect. Something I've been kind of talking about is, is connecting the new to the known. So I think what, what you laid out for, for D and D is, is, is exactly that. And I, I think, you know, uh, some prep, but some minor changes to probably what the average elementary school teacher is doing. So yeah, man, great stuff. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Of course. Again, thank you, Ben, for uh, letting me kind of pick your brain about how you would bring D&D into your classroom. Uh, but without further ado, let's talk about should you bring it into your classroom? Now, a question I've been asked a lot about the should I teach it segment is, is there ever going to be a piece of media that you say we shouldn't teach? And to that, I definitely say yes. My hope for the future is that I get more uh, audience-submitted media that I'm considering to diversify what I'm talking about. Uh, but even with things I'm picking my own for what an episode might be about, the end of an episode and realize that something is not going to be an effective teaching tool and therefore shouldn't be incorporated into your curriculum. In terms of D&D, I think this is something that should be taught on a conditional basis. Dungeons & Dragons is much more of a format of storytelling than an actual piece of content. Certainly there are published campaigns for people to play, but I don't necessarily see those being used unless you're a diehard D&D fan and you know your students will respond to it positively. With that, I'd really look at D&D as a strategy to bring into your classroom, a activity to bring into your classroom and have students learn and apply a range of skills. If you're familiar with the concepts and mechanics of the game, you should have no problem adapting it to any range of objectives you might have in your classroom. If you are a layman when it comes to the game, it may be something that you want to avoid, and therefore I think I'm saying some people shouldn't teach it. The core structure of the game can be overly complicated, and the process of both you learning it and you teaching it to your students could just become unwieldy, ultimately getting in the way of what you need to accomplish in your classes. So think about what you know and make the plunge as you see fit. So for many of you, Dungeons and Dragons can seem hard to get into and almost impenetrable to understand, but in the right circumstances, I think it can lead to some truly dynamic and engaging classroom experiences. With that, people, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Uh, follow me on Twitter at Mr. Adam Abort and on Instagram at Can I Teach It? But until next time, happy teaching.